Welcome to World of Darkness. Hello everybody, uh, welcome to my video AAR called World of Darkness. And I hereby welcome everybody here uh, to my YouTube channel and um, to enjoy this experience and gameplay that I'm gonna do um, while, you know, doing some commentary with it. I have all DLCs installed for Crusader Kings 2. Uh, my name is Atasurge Novak, and we'll be playing uh, Crusader Kings 2 on the CK2 Plus mod uh, with the Better Armies and Title of the Titles mod included. Um, I'm I'm very very interested in this game because this game like has an increasing and everlasting depth to it compared to other games that I have played. I want to I wanted to make a video AR because. I think that I get connected to stories way more when I do a video and others watch me while I do play it. Um, yeah, if you have any ideas about anything I do in game, any thoughts, anything you want to share, you can share it in the forum thread in Paradox in the AAR section, uh, or you can also share it in the comments section below on YouTube. Uh, just feel free and you know say anything you want. Uh, maybe you know say things that would help me in game uh, anything that would you know like make everybody's experience better uh, I might even at some point uh, of this video AR I might even you know ask people what to do and you know the most liked comment will be done by me in the game uh, yeah so first of all I'd like to thank all of you for watching this now and without further boring you uh, I'm gonna go start our game. Here is our lovely main menu. <laughs> I think uh, most of you already know this if you have played Crusader Kings. If not, um, I'll hope I'll be some. Uh, I'll, I'll be explaining things a little bit for our new players. Let's get to our single player map here and zoom down on Hungary. Click on Count's Map Mode, and there we go. We're going to be playing as Count Mate of Feher. As you can see, uh, he's from the dynasty of Akos, the House Akos. And, uh, yeah, let's just jump into the game. Let's go. And there we are. We are located in the Kingdom of Hungary, and we are located right here at the edge. This is the Kingdom of Hungary. Yes, this is our place with a nice river flowing through it, and this is us, Count Mate of Feher. Um, I'm going to quickly be looking over the traits of him. Uh, he's Gregorius, which is nice. He's brave, he's humble, he's club-footed. Not that good for the misses, but will do. Scholarly Theologian, yeah, I mean, we have some good learning skills here then. Um, we have one heir, which is our daughter. Um, having female heirs is not this not that advantageous in Crusader Kings 2. Uh, we get minus 5 uh, relation for being female and a ruler. Um, so let's just quickly go over our, our tabs here and get familiar with what we got to do in this gameplay. So now that we have, we know that we have a wife, Jolan of Feher. Our name is Mate. Um, she's not that beautifully looking, but yeah, we need to make some male kids. Uh, I think would be way better in a relationship-wise. But who cares? Let's go to the council. We have our chancellor, our marshal, our steward, our spy master, and our court chaplain. Our chancellor is going to be improving diplomatic relationships in our Transylvanian dukedom capital duchy capital um, so this is I'm going to quickly show you this is Transylvania and I'm located here and our marshal is going to be training troops our steward is going to be, let's see if there are no there are no, no any better ones. Uh, our steward is going to be researching economy technologies. Our spy master is going to be uncovering lots, and we don't have any court chaplains. Ah, not good. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to Ind intrigue, and we're going to find us 
a holy man. Invite the holy man to court. I'm gonna lose 10 piety. Uh, Priest named Cornell is gonna appear. Let's see. There, Cornell. Oh, welcome, Cornell. I'm gonna convert populace. Is this man. Uh, he's a Catholic. Okay, we're gonna convert populace because in our populace we seem to be we seem to be orthodox. I don't want to be orthodox. I want to be a uh, Catholic and you know be in the kingdom of Hungary as a Catholic uh, count, and this includes my province. So now that we've finished that now that we've finished with the council, we're gonna move on to laws. Uh, our law is Gavelkind, Ignatic Gavelkind, uh, which means the titles of the ruler ruler are divided among his children, with the oldest getting the primary title. If the ruler has no children who can inherit, the law defaults to primogeniture. You get no prestige penalty for having unlanded sons, and can have a 33% larger domain. Gavelkind is a very popular law with everyone except the oldest child. Women can inherit, but only if there are no eligible males. Now, yeah, this is the, the general um, succession that we see in this game. So uh, yeah, we're not going to change this in the beginning because we need a lot of prestige to change things. So we're not going to aim for that right now. Yeah. So now that is done. Hmm. Let's check our lessons. Okay. Um, Tax-wise, I'm not going to increase anything yet. I just came to the game and I don't want. I don't know what, what, what everything is, and my relations with my vassals seem to be not that good. So we'll rather not change anything and make more people angry. So are uh, we going to move on to technology? And oops, we are way behind as it seems. What? Oh, sorry. What, what can we do here, guys? Um, hmm. I want to go to legalism first. Um, do farming and then bulls. Yeah, these are these are fine. For now you know what can we do? Technology that like, improves very very slowly in this game. So I'm gonna wait a little bit more for that. Oh, we can raise around 370 troops in total. Um, three, yeah, around 370. That is good for accounts. That should do. And um, all these mercenary bands for money. But we're not going to use any of them. We're going to go the peaceful way for now. Our intrigue menu. Um, we have to choose different plots. Fabricate a claim on the Duchy of Transylvania. Not yet, way too early, but it could be used for a later time. Um, we can convert to Orthodox and embrace the Vlach culture. The Vlach culture seems to be set around this Golovin, uh, Golovin area. I'd rather stick to the Hungarian culture than this area. Um, for now, of course. Like this is a, this makes more sense for now. I'm going to initiate a grant hunt and. I will find the white stag. I've given the order for a grand hunt to be organized in Fahir. We'll find the white stag. Okay, factions. Faction-wise, we don't have much things to do here. Um, not many factions are in the beginning of the game. They just, you know, they just appear later, a bit later. Our religion, we're the Catholic. Yeah, we're under the Catholic Christian faith under Alexander and the Pope of Rome. Yeah. Other than that, everything seems to be fine and. Seems to be okay. Uh, I need to choose an ambition. Ambitions are very important. Um, it's been a while since I played Vanilla Crusader Kings 2, but um, in CK2 Plus, it's very, very important. Uh, I think there in, in Vanilla, it's also very important. Um, I want to convert a province because our province is an orthodox one. I want to convert it to a Catholic faith. Yeah, I want to convert that one. Perfect. Now that we, we have that covered, the first thing we got to do is move on to our family. And we need to marry our daughters to famous and good looking people. So let's start with it. I wanted to say, but we don't have anybody to marry them with. Oh, there we go. Okay. Now we can King of Abyssinia, uh, Ethiopia. Oh no, rather not. Oh, we got a lot of kings. That is nice way to get our reputation out there. Um, so I'm thinking of marrying someone in Hungary rather than you know aiming for a distant land. 
also maybe something that could have, that could influence Hungary in a way. Hmm. What about going to the royal family and finding a sibling? No, no. Sorry, just pull that there. Um. Parents, King Andrus of Hungary, his wife, grandparents, his heir is Duke Gaza. So we need to find a young, good looking man here. There we go, Prince Laszlo. Is he married though? He is not perfect. This is a Duke. He lives in, in this uh, Zikelfeld. Zikelfeld? Um, don't quote me on my pronunciation here, I might be totally wrong. But at least I am trying. Okay, let's get this guy married to our beautiful looking daughter. Of course, we can't get him married matrilineally because he's the only heir to the kingdom. It's not that easy, but the offer is gone. Now the other daughter, oh, is already is already married to my son. Yeah, okay, perfect, my steward. That makes sense. And now we got our only heir. Uh, this is gonna be a questionable thing. What are we gonna do here? <sighs> um, the Prince of Bohemia, 11 years old, brave and chaste. How bad can this guy be? I need somebody kind of because she's gonna be in six years. She's gonna be 30 years old. So we need. There we go, sweater board. This guy, he's just off. Oh, check, check, that means that's, that's good. Oh, let's find somebody else. Denmark, Denmark, Sweden. Prince of Hungary. 12 years. This is perfect, Prince of Hungary. Then marry this one. And matrilineally as well. This will bring us to the point that whatever kid, um, whatever, you know, I'm just gonna read this over. Uh, matrilineal marriage. Under the terms of a matrilineal marriage, any children born of the union will be of the mother's dynasty rather than the father's. This is a way of ensuring the continuation of your dynasty if your ruler or heir is female. Now, um, this can be used very tactically in this game to make sure you get a lot of titles uh, from very important people by marrying them into your family matrilineally if you're female. Uh, heirs, so you get the titles of their sons from their families. So um, this is, you know, the other point for Crusader Kings. I like this pyramid style and in-depth relations with everybody and titles and, and, and dukedoms and kingdoms and emperors. You know, there's a lot of things going in courts and marriages and everything. It's very very cool. Um, I'm gonna send this offer as well. Now that we've done the most important things, I'm gonna start the game. We're gonna be going at 3x speed in general. We have efficient domain, heretic capital, heretic capital. Um, to the most excellent cat matter, may you live in harmony and contentment. I accept your suggestion that Zila and Prince Lazar get married. Perfect. Give him 3x now. The hounds were more alert this morning than I have ever seen before. Something stupendous must be awaiting us. What are they waiting for? Let's go. 15% chance that I get wounded. I don't care what it is, we'll hunt. Let's do this another day. Guys, what are they waiting for? Let's go. I've decided to institute the medium city taxes law. This is our du uh, Duke, uh, the Prince Lazar speaking, the Duke of Transylvania. All that is needed to support is your... Uh, okay, he needs the support of his vassals. And I need to approve this guy because I'm marrying my daughter to him. Okay, I've accepted it. I'll rather pay a little bit more. Our income is not that good. The glorious Count Mete, your wisdom and mercy are legendary. I've decided to accept your suggestion of a matrilineal betrothal between Sugaka and Prince David. Yes, this is awesome. This is awesome. Count Antel of Pest is found. Uh, okay, a lot of. Close these ones. The sight hounds thirsted for blood this gentle afternoon, and they brought us many hairs. This is a fine sport. Gates okay, prestige. Our hunting party has cornered a large bear. A small argument amongst the hunters regarding who should get the kill. The bear has nearly turned into a brawl. Um, 
I'm just gonna get this bee and go for it. The great hunt is over for now. This was truly a noble endeavor and a true challenge of our for our martial abilities. Well, I'm proud of my hunting abilities, I say, and the great hunt is over. Now that we've done that, I want to be involved in something else, in a feast. Let's plan a feast. I have given the orders for a great feast to be hosted and for her. Let's let the preparations begin. I like to keep my pimp people entertained and, you know, make sure they have a fun I have lots of things to do. When I opened the door I saw no one, but I stepped inside to close to close it a group of acrobats cartwheeled, somersaulted and tumbled in. They performed all sorts of tricks and everyone watching exploded into applause when they finished. Hmm. You would be perfect for my feast. No feast is complete without boar meat. Who will get the prestigious task of hunting and slaying the bulls needed for the feast? I can set out my marshal, I would honor him, or I could hunt myself. I'm gonna hunt myself. Next I'm gonna set my marshal. The peasants told the whole castle about a dragon they saw in the forest, and now the eager young men keep nagging me about a true dragon hunt. Hmm. I will kill it and hang this head over the hearth because I have. I can. This option is available because I have the brave trait. Fierce and dragon, thou doth not scare me. Um, I can get a martial trait, or I can get better relations with both of my mayors. I rather get a better relation with both of my uh, vassals. One of one of them, which is a mayor, the other one is a bishop. The best part about preparing a feast is deciding what food stuff to serve. I must purchase venison, boar and duck, spices, wine and ale, honey for the dessert and cheese and perhaps even a swan or a peacock. I'm gonna spend lavishly on food. Oh and I don't have many oh, I don't have much gold left, so I need to be a bit more careful with my expenses here. Um most of my preparations have been made, now I only have to send invitations. But me and my, my mayor and my bishop to my feast. So it's going to be like a little party instead of a feast. But, you know, it's good. Okay. The guests have finally arrived. All is ready. The cooks have worked day and night preparing the food, and the castle has never looked lovelier. Welcome to my feast. This is amazing. They're in my cap county capital here right now. This is awesome. Oh, it's quiet. I'm wondering what's happening. The last of the guests have returned home and everyone agreed it was the year's greatest feast. Perfect. Now, one of the other important things is, um, you need to have a good relationship with your vessels. Your vessels pay tax to you. Well, not this annoying Gyorgi Erad, who just pays taxes to the Pope of Alexander II. But, you know, we have to consider to be in good relationship with our people. Um, and our managers of our people. I'm gonna make this guy a cupbearer. And I'm gonna make our mayor. The master of the hunt. Uh, yeah, that, that looks way better. How can I make this guy pay me the tax? Hmm. He, sa it's, he says loyal to Pope Alexander. Catholic bishops are not obliged to pay any taxes or provide levies to their secular liege. They will pay the Pope, their secular liege, or even an anti Pope depending on who they like best. They don't like me. This guy doesn't like me then. Like me, you bastard. Ah, uh, okay. I don't think I can get him to like me that quickly. So let's continue our game. Yeah, I hope um, we will have a fortunate future. Because um, my last gameplay wasn't that good. Ended up with me and my family dying. Okay, what do we have here? Poor seed selection hurts farming in Fahir. Oh, 
Fairhair gets poor until... Oh, that's bad. Um, that is not good. This is not good at all. And skill-wise, we don't have any good skills here, you know, like six. What was six? Six for stewardship. These are very bad skills that they have here. So, um, yeah, not the best options of of, of of a council, but, you know, it's okay. My liege, I regret that, that I must be the bearer of ill news. In my research, I have come across a new farming technique which would increase the crop yield of the peasants' fields. Despite the best of my intentions, my attempts to implement these techniques have been met with suspicion and hostility from the local peasants, who are up in arms for what they believe to be a scheme to raise taxes. Foolish peasants! I'm going to send my marshal to suppress that revolt. See, we have the present obstructionism modifier here right now increasing local reward risk and we have the poor modifier here uh, we need to remove these um, and that's why I'm going to use my council for we need to research economy tank and suppress revolts to get rid of these two so uh, yeah they're doing that already I really like this position and uh, and, and like I, I chose this count for my video AR because I thought it's in a great position, and uh, we could you know expand a lot. And in Crusader Kings, there are so many possibilities to do like so many things. So it really doesn't matter where you start. It depends on how you play and you know how your story progresses. My liege, I've tried to make Prince Lassiter of Hungary realize what a benevolent and peaceful ruler you really are, but sinister forces at his court have been at hard at work to discredit my every move and distort my every word. I'm afraid that in the end, the wizard seems to have done more harm than good. Your humble chancellor, Mayor Elios of Guyula de Herwar. Don't uh, stab me on my <laughs> pronunciation, guys. It's very... It's not that good, I know. Yeah, what an amazing map this is. I really love the Crusader Kings map. Very lovely and beautiful. Yeah, so there is our little county, and you can see our little little, little um, city and everything there. And then if I would do a castle, I would do it on top of this hill. But yeah. Um, let's have a quick look at the royal family of Hungary. We have King Salomon married the throat to Princess Jutta of the Holy Roman Empire. Well, wise marriage, I would say king. Is there Geza, which I married my daughter to? And hold on. No. Yeah, Geza, which um, Duchess Sophie wasn't Laszlo the leech? This is interesting. What is the law of selection? Agnetic seniority for the for the selection of heirs. The oldest member of the dynasty inherits all titles. Your oldest child will greatly disagree with this law, but all of the members of the dynasty will approve only males can inherit. Hmm. Now this may okay, if so if I would if let's let's think we were evil. If we would kill Geza, then Laszlo would become the heir. And my daughter married Laszlo. And matrilineally at that, that would mean if they have kids, they're going to be the oldest of the dynasty. And then they are going to be the heirs of the kingdom of Hungary, if I'm correct. But, yeah. Let's see what's going to happen. We're pretty new, we don't have much money, we don't have much influence here. So, let's not rush things, but let's keep the theories up to date, shouldn't we? Yeah, so guys, I think this has been um, long enough for the first episode, and I thank you for watching this, and I hope you keep track of this video AR, 
anything, any ideas, just you know, put it in the comment section below. I thank you for uh, the mod, the, the the developers for the mods. Uh, thank you guys first. Uh, very good job on dub done on them. I played them before. Um, I also thank Paradox for making this great game. Uh, really uh, redefined their uh, game 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 developer title, in my opinion. Um, so I hope you enjoyed the, the this this video. AR. Uh, a world of darkness <laughs> and uh, see you in the next episode see ya